Chip Salenza. Retaking Orgo again. 53rd time's a charm. Hello. Are you guys confused by acids and bases? Well, it turns out that they're actually very useful and dangerous, so it's important that you guys understand them and not take Orgo 53 times because that's no fun because then you have to deal with me for 53 years. And trust me, I've dealt with myself for 20 years. And mm -mm. So you guys probably have already heard of HCl, also known as hydrochloric acid, right? It's in your stomach, breaking down your foods, so this way your body can absorb the nutrients and give you energy to stay awake and watch my face. Another acid is HF, also known as hydrofluoric acid. It's actually weaker than HCl, but it's actually more dangerous. Did you know that? The reason is because HF, right? A lot of people, when they get, get exposed to it, they don't realize it. HF goes through your skin, and then when it gets to your bone, it starts dissolving away at it. So that's no good. It's also very bad for your eyes and your lungs, so make sure always use goggles and no sniffing. Woo! No sniffing. So onto the stuff that's gonna be on your exams, right? Do the Lewis or Bronsted Lowry definitions of acids confuse you guys? Well, why don't we forget about all the names and just think about it another way, okay? My way of thinking about acids is sort of like a combination of the two. When I took Orgo, I just thought of acids as basically just a molecule that has a hydrogen that it loses very easily, or, or the hydrogen falls off very easily. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, why does the hydrogen fall off uh, so easily, right? Or why does, the hi why does the molecule ditch that hydrogen so easily? Did the hydrogen sleep with the rest of the molecule's wives? No, it's actually because the bond between the hydrogen and the rest of the molecule, so that's this bond right here, is very, very weak, loose, uh, crappy basically, and the hydrogen just falls off very easily, like this. Oh, okay. And then for bases, it's like the complete opposite. Bases such as sodium hydroxide, right? They have electrons, or pairs of electrons, that can form nice, sturdy, strong, solid, firm bonds with hydrogen. And then bases don't lose the hydrogen so easily. It's kind of like this. No matter how hard I try to like break it, the bond doesn't really break because the base can form such a strong bond with hydrogens. And that's basically all I really think about when somebody asks me what acid or base is. Okay? Okay, well maybe it didn't really smell that bad. It was just an empty bottle of methanol. But still, don't sniff. Okay, so now we're gonna recap real quickly, okay? So strong acids, they lose hydrogens very easily, and they lose the hydrogen very easily because they have weak bonds with the hydrogen. And when they lose the hydrogen, right, they basically become a base, and they, or they go into their base form, and that's called a conjugate base. So when they go into their base form, right, they can't maintain a strong bond with hydrogen, so they can grab onto hydrogens and hold onto it. So that's, that's why when they're in their base forms, they're very, very weak bases. But for strong bases, however, right, when they uh, start off, they are really, really strong bases. They can grab onto a hydrogen and hold onto it very, very tightly so, because they can maintain stronger bonds with um, hydrogen. So when they grab onto the hydrogen, they, they instead go into their acid forms, which is called conjugate acids. And um, when they go into their conjugate acid forms, right, these strong bases, since they can maintain a nice strong bond, they can't do their job as an acid very well, which is to throw away the hydrogen because they can maintain such strong bonds. So that's why strong bases become weak acids and strong acids become weak bases, okay? So as you guys can see, there's basically a converse or opposite relationship between acid strength and base strength, okay? Um, by now, you guys are probably ask, wondering or thinking, Frank, I get that, but how do I know if a molecule has a strong bond or a weak bond just by looking at it, right? Well, there's three things that you have to take into account. Something called the inductive or electronegative effect, which I'm going to explain in my next video. The size of the atom inside your molecule that's actually being bonded with the hydrogen. That's video three. And then how concentrated the electrons actually are in that bond between your molecule and the hydrogen is gonna help you determine that. And that's gonna be part four of this video series. Um, that's basically it for this intro series. Make sure you guys check those out. If you like this video, make sure you like it down there. If you um, have time, leave a comment down below. I really, really love reading your comments and responding to them. So don't forget to share and subscribe and connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. If you wanna donate a couple bucks, the link is right there. See you in part two. Bye.